my name is Sydney Edwards. I'm a public information officer here at Aurora PD. We want to thank everyone for meeting us here today. It is with your help that we are going to be able to put names to the faces of these suspects and bring peace to the families of Nakia Brown and Kate and Hutt. Now we will have detectives Chris Barchetti and Troy Rain speak on the incident. Nakia's mother, Ethel Goodrich, will have a moment to talk and Police Chief Art Acevedo will be following up afterwards. We ask that you hold any questions until after Chief Acevedo talks, and then we can answer any of those questions that you might have. Now, for spelling of names, please speak with me afterwards, and I'll get those for you. But for now, I'll hand this on over to Detective Barchetti. Uh, thank you all for coming today. The reason why we're here today is to talk about an incident that occurred in the city of Aurora. It was a uh, double homicide. Um, this incident occurred on December 24th, uh, 2022, at around 12.30 a.m., 1592 North Boston Street, apartment 102. What we know from the investigation at this point in time is that two individuals uh, arrived in a dark blue, we believe, metallic sedan. And I will cover the individuals a little bit further. This will be one of the suspects. Uh, they arrived. They knocked on the door to the apartment and were let in, presumably by Nakia or Mr. Hutt. Uh, they were inside for minutes, at which point uh, we have audio that covers multiple gunshots with someone screaming and then a few more gunshots, followed by the two suspects fleeing the apartment into the street and re-entering the uh, metallic blue sedan. Uh, surveillance video captures a driver that never exits the metallic blue suspect car, as well as a front seat passenger. To this point in time, we have not been able to identify a maker model on that vehicle, and we are still working towards that at this point. Suspect number one, as you can see, is wearing all black, uh, has a face mask that covers the majority of his face, leaving a small window of vision right here across his face. He appears to be either African American or a darker Hispanic male. I can't tell for certain based on the models. The second suspect uh, is obviously unknown race, and you can clearly see that he's covered from head to toe. Uh, both individuals are wearing gloves as well as uh, face coverings. This individual is actually wearing uh, sunglasses. Um, there were multiple shots fired, and we are still exploring all options of the investigation. My partner, Detective Baines, is going to cover the car and some details that are very unique to it. So I'm going to turn it over to him for a few minutes. Good afternoon. Thank you uh, for being here. <clears throat> the vehicle, as Detective Barchetti said, it's a metallic blue, again, Based on the surveillance videos that we have, we were unable to uh, determine an actual make or model of the vehicle. However, it has some very unique uh, aspects to it. Both sides of the vehicle, this is the passenger side. You can tell that the front hubcap appears to be missing from the vehicle. Uh, this is another shot of it, surveillance parked. This is where it parked in front of 1592 Boston, where the suspects exited both the uh, rear seats of the vehicle because it was occupied by two people in the front. More surveillance video. Um, we know the video, excuse me, we know the vehicle uh, came. Let me get back to it. Oh, I knew I'd mess that up. Uh, it came off of 16th Avenue on the Boston, does a U turn on Boston Street, and then parks in front of 1592 Boston. I thought we had a picture of the other side, but the driver's side vehicle, the front tire looks exactly as well so you see the black rims on both of the front tires it's the most unique part of the vehicle so far that we have um, we have sent out multiple uh, bulletins statewide to try to locate this vehicle so we're asking the public if anybody knows this vehicle recognize it to uh, please let us know Hello, my name is Ethel, and my daughter was taken away from me on Christmas Eve. To her family, she was Nakia, 
to many friends, she was Tiffany, a loving mother, daughter, sister, granddaughter, niece, aunt, cousin, and friend. She did not deserve what happened to her on this past Christmas. This tragedy has broken many hearts, young and old, and has already delivered many sleepless nights for our entire family. While I know through my faith and the grace of God that we will heal on the Lord's time, we are asking you all for your help today in identifying my baby's killer. The hardest thing that you can do is to tell her sons that we don't know why or who took their mother away from them. So we ask for your help. Help to mend my heart, my grandsons, my son's heart, and the hearts of many by finding out the unknown. To the person or persons that took my daughter's life, I want you to know that when you took her life, you took a part of mine as well. No parent should have to bury a child. While my heart should be filled with rage, bitterness, and vengeance today, it is not because I must forgive you. I forgive you not just for me, but for my daughter, Nakia, known as Tiffany, her sons, her brothers, and our family, because we cannot hold on to the hate. We cannot raise her children on the hate that we might feel in our hearts. So as I forgive you, I also pray that God has mercy on your soul because his word says, don't touch my anointed. You took her life, but I choose to believe that you set her soul free and she is now made whole. If God allowed this tragedy to happen, then I know he is going to turn it around for the good. I will get justice and it will be up to God just how that justice is served. Again, I do forgive the killers that took my child's life and I don't hold their parents responsible for their actions. So Satan, this is a message for you directly. You tried to break me and make me curse my God by taking my child, but it had the opposite impact. You pushed me closer to my God and he has made our family stronger through this tragedy. You are defeated and you will give me back everything that you have stolen from me and my family. I speak life over my bloodline, and I openly thank God in advance for what he is about to do. Nakia will not be forgotten, and we will fight to find her killers, and God will give us peace as well as Caden's family. Thank you. All right, good afternoon, uh, Mom, on just behalf of all of us, thank you and to the family for your courage, for your strength, uh, for your grace. It's just something that I think touches uh, all of our hearts and I, I would hope all the hearts of everyone watching. You're right, a mother should not have to bury it. And you being here today, what we're praying for, what we're hopefully, hopeful for, is that someone out there, we know that crooks talk, bad actors talk, there are people that are going to watch this this evening that knows who's involved. And I would say if you know something about who took these two lives, you need to come forward before that violence touches you and your family and your neighbor and your friend because we are a community. So I hope that this will actually have the impact that I know you so desperately want. Uh, Kate's mom wanted to be here but couldn't be um, it's a tough situation for mothers and she asked me to read some a few words about her son on her behalf Caton was a giving and gracious person he had the biggest heart and would give anyone anything they asked these were his strengths as well as his weaknesses just by looking at Caton Caton was there Fully blind, and at times people took advantage of that. But Tiffany, Nakia, was a friend to him. 
I don't know why someone would do this, but they did not have to. Caton did not have to die for this. We love him and miss him so much. He deserved better than that, and I hope if anyone knows anything, they can speak up so we can have justice for my son and for Nakia. And again, when you look at those videos, I'm sure we're going to give the pictures, uh, better pictures. That's a very distinctive looking car. We may not know what the make is, but if you know a car that even comes close to resemble that vehicle, please come forward. There is a reward from uh, our Crime Stoppers partners here in uh, the greater Denver Aurora area. Uh, so if there's nothing else, you can have a reward. Uh, let me just say something else about our homicide team. You know, uh, sadly, you're not the only family. There's so many families in our country. But half of murders in this country do not go. That they're not going to give up. This is a crew of detectives uh, and a team that does not give up. We will not give up. We are continuing to work with this community. And while nearly half, and in some places more than half, murders go unsolved, in the city of Aurora, Colorado, Thanks to our partnership with our community, which really is our greatest force of multipliers, the public that we serve, and the commitment of our detectives, we uh, last year were already at 77% solve rate for our murders uh, last year, and we're close to solving four more that we're very confident will be closed and solved in the upcoming weeks, which will bring, up, bring us up to 85%. And that's not an unusual year for Aurora, Colorado. We are always in the high 70s and in the 80s. And again, that speaks to two things, the commitment of our men and women and our relationship with the public. So please come forward in la comunidad hispana, latina. Esta familia ha estado muy dolorida. Tienen mucho dolor. Y tienen dolor porque perdieron a su hijo, perdieron a una hija que el, el 24 de diciembre cuando estamos celebrando el nacimiento del, de Jesucristo, esta familia tuvo que tener una llamada que habían matado a su hija y a la otra familia que mataron a su hijo. Este vehículo es un vehículo que estamos seguros que es, el que estaba manejando los sospechosos. Si le conoce a ese vehículo, por favor, llame inmediatamente a la policía de Aurora. Con el favor de Dios y con la ayuda de la comunidad, sabemos que alguien sabe algo. Reporte, no, no tenga temor. No me importa si es legal, ilegal, indocumentado, documentado. Nosotros estamos aquí para buscar la justicia. Acuérdese, si no está documentado y ese es testigo, le vamos a dar una visa, un U visa, que es una visa que puedes trabajar y puedes vivir aquí legalmente porque es parte de esta investigación. Uh, también hay un. Uh, uh, el Crime Stoppers va a dar dinero al que le da esta información. Uh, por resolver este, este crimen injusto. And so with that, I'm going to step aside, but again, thank you for showing that mama bears are really the, the bedrock of society, moms, and uh, you've demonstrated that today through, through your courage. And I'm just hopeful that we will, these detectives, I know they're not gonna give up. Uh, they don't give up and we will not give up. So with that, I'm gonna step aside to see if there's any questions from anyone. We, we do have some questions, and I was wondering, uh, ma'am, Ethel, if you could... The lady she was, personality, things that made her a different special to you. Yeah, Nik Nikia, known as Tiffany, um, she was a given person. She wore her emotions on her sleeve. Um, she was a caretaker, a nurturer. Um, she always wanted to be there for her family. She loved her kids. Um, she was a daddy's girl. And when her daddy died of a heart attack, she just kind of spiraled down. Um, mental health illness is real in this world. And we don't talk about it, uh, but that's a lot of the generation, our youth today is the mental illness. And so she did struggle with mental illness. Um, she did have some substance abuse. But at the end of the day, she had a heart of gold. I mean, she had a smile that opened up the heavens and let blessings pour down on you. I mean, she just, 
she loved openly. And everyone that knew her, whether it was from family or from classmates or people on the streets, employers, they could all see that anointing over her. And that's what makes this so hard. And it also is the main reason why I know I have to forgive because she forgave. And I know that I can't say that I love God if I don't forgive the person that took her life. And at the end of the day, as tragic as this may be, it's bigger than my daughter, it's bigger than Caden. I mean, gun violence is a big issue in America today. And it's time that we come together and stop talking about what we're going to do it and we need to take actions. And the only way that we're gonna get actions taken is that we're gonna have to People that are of faith are going to have to come forth and let their faith be known openly and call Satan out openly so God can show up and show out. But we talk about we love God, we want this, we want that. No one is willing to go on the air and say, Satan, we see you, you are defeated, and God has this. And he is going to give not just my family the victory or Caden's family, but every other family that have lost children to gunfire. It is time for Christians to step up so God can show up and show out and let Satan know that this may be his earth, but he is already defeated. So can you uh, tell us if you have any idea what she was doing that evening before this happened? Uh, she was supposed to actually... We had been with her the 21st, her four-year-old turned four. We were celebrating his birthday. She actually was supposed to be coming to my house that day for Christmas. I was supposed to be picking her up that morning. I was trying to get her that Friday evening because my son came in to surprise her. And for whatever reason, God had other plans, but I could not reach her. Um, she was supposed to be picking up last minute gifts for her son. Um, I know that out of that house, they did drugs out of that house. Um, so I'm not saying that my daughter was perfect, but I'm not the only one that has a child, a child that has substance abuse. And that still is no reason to take anyone's life. Um, I do believe that their lives was taken because of the person that they were looking for wasn't there. And she's obviously a mom. Can you tell us how many kids? She has three, a four, a 10, and a 16-year-old that we are left to raise and take care of. But I want them to know that their mother loved them and that she will get justice, whether it's on this side or the other side. But I need to demonstrate for them um, forgiveness so that they don't grow up with bitterness in their hearts because then we all lose because that's what Satan wants. Um, so I do truly forgive them and I want them to have peace because I don't believe that whoever took her life has peace right now. I think they're tussling and wrestling with something and I do believe that if they come forth, then their soul will be set free as well because this is a spiritual warfare. It's just been fought out in the natural. But this is a spiritual warfare that's going on, and Satan is running out of time, and he's trying to take as many people as he can. You mentioned that you, you thought that it might have been whoever did this was looking for someone else. And Let me cover that. He'll cover that. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to cover that for you, sir. <clears throat> so investigation hasn't revealed any specific motive at this point. There were people that uh, congregated at this apartment, and we're still investigating all avenues. So at this point, we don't know if that is actually, um, they were looking for somebody else or there's another motive, so. Any other crimes that have similarities that you're investigating? Because obviously, it's a any connections with any other incidents with these individuals in the car? At this point, we do not have any connections that have come to light with a vehicle that matches that specific description. It's very unique, like Detective Raines talked about. Um, and we haven't had any crimes that are with the same clothing or the same MO at this point. We are, I 
can't speculate to answer that. Obviously, um, we, we don't know who they are, uh, but, but clearly there was a plan. And unfortunately, two young folks lost their lives senselessly because of it. One of the people that was covered up is wearing blue gloves. They don't look like winter gloves. They look like surgical gloves or something that would keep fingerprints from being put somewhere. Is that something you all have talked about or noticed? I'm going to cover that. We did notice it uh, in reviewing the surveillance video. Um, those photographs are actually from the surveillance from the apartment complex itself. Um, so we, you know, unfortunately that happens not only this crime but other crimes uh, that take place. So it kind of defeats our purpose on some of the aspects for forensic analysis. So it was something that we noted, you know, as part of the investigation. It was also said that there was audio of gunshots. Uh, how was that audio recorded? Was that recorded? Yeah, that, uh, the camera for that location records both video and audio. And that's where the voices would have been recorded as well? Um, the or the, the shouting or something? Yes, that's correct. And clar for clarification, you said the car drove past the apartment and then did a U-turn and parked in front of it? Is that what happened? Yes, yeah, so from the surveillance video that we were able to obtain from multiple locations, uh, the vehicle traveled westbound on East 16th Avenue, makes a left-hand turn onto North Boston Street, goes probably three-quarters of the way down before it gets to East Colfax Avenue, makes a U-turn, comes back and parks in front of the apartment complex, and then after the incident occurred, the vehicle basically goes back in the same direction it came from. How much time lapsed between when you see they enter to the gun shop? Uh, there's about 10 minutes from the time they exit the vehicle, they enter the apartment, and the gunshots occur. Um, yes, ma'am. Uh, community. I would like somebody to tell me what the community is um, about this case because what is the information that you have and what is the case? Experience? No, sir. Oh, okay. It's all you. Um, it, when you say details, what are you referring to? And then I'll have the chief translate for me unless you want the yeah. interpreter to come up. Would it be car. beneficial to have the chief maybe one on one? Is there anybody else that needs to be Let me ask, that? let me add one thing. This happened on Christmas Eve, and we're, a lot of people, people of faith in this community. Well, we know that Easter is right around the corner, and I'm just hopeful that with the resurrection comes justice. And so, again, somebody out here knows something, and I'm just praying, Mom, with your courage, that somebody else's courage to step forward. And I'll do a side with you. I, I have another question. Were uh, Tiffany and uh, Mr. Hutt friends? Were they just acquaintances? Or were you going to cover that? Or how would that sound like they were friends from the mother's Yeah, family. our understanding, and, and, and Chris can talk about a little bit more too, is uh, they were very close friends. Uh, she was, in some aspects, uh, kind of like a caretaker uh, for Caton. Um, she uh, spent a lot of her time at that location with him, helping him based on his uh, uh, physical ailments of, of his blindness. Uh, so we do know from that that she was uh, the type of person that was always taking care of. She would help him out. Um, he had a phone stolen previously that was a um, phone for uh, his blindness. It was able to allow him to use the phone. That was stolen, so he had a regular phone like the rest of us used, so she would help him use that. Uh, so that's the kind of person she was, and that was their uh, relationship. And to clarify, that was his apartment, and it sounds like that was his? Correct. Okay. I don't know the medical diagnosis for it. My understanding, it was just a, um, uh, he, over time, became more like a legally blind type. He could see shadows and stuff. It wasn't like a complete darkness type of blindness, my understanding. It, would the family like for us to talk about maybe, um, it, was she his caretaker or did she have a line of work that you guys would like for us to mention? 
No, she was his caretaker. She did. That's why she was there the majority of the time was to be his caretaker and to take care of him. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you all once again for coming out. And as the chief had mentioned, please call out to Crime Stoppers if there are any tips. You can make them anonymous. That number is 720-913-7867. Thank you all so much. And Sydney, will there be, you mentioned one-on-one -on -one possibly, because he has another crew that would like to talk to the family. So yes. Okay. Um, for anybody that was interested, I know we had some people reach out. Ethel has agreed to do one on one interview. Um, detectives are also available for that, and we can get anybody who needs an interpreter. We do have one in the room as well. Thank you.